Alright, hey again guys, Wedgerox here from Rocket League Mods. So, this tutorial is going to be about application of Kismet. So, this is my blank scene, so it basically just has a platform for me to stand on with a blocking volume on it, um, a light, this square here is supposed to be where the ball would probably spawn. Um, you can find that out just by going into the game and seeing where it spawns really. And then maybe taking a screenshot of it and then looking at it and placing a block there. So this is just a blocking volume here. Um, I have a boost pad with a boost pill on it that doesn't work properly. And a player start. Okay, there's the player start. So, this volume here doesn't actually have any blocking on it. It used to, it doesn't anymore. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up what I showed you in the last video. So to start with, we're just going to create the trigger volumes because that's the first place that is the best place to start, I reckon. So I'm just going to quickly grab this brush and make it bigger. There we go. Going into this view, scrolling out a bit. That's a bit too big. Doesn't need to be that big. There we go, that'll do. I'll take that down. There we go. That'll do for the first one. So that's going to be for your player. So you want it to be big enough that it encompasses all of the possible spawn points. So if I create the trigger volume here, that's good. Alright, and now I can move this, um, scale it down a bit, try and make it around about the same size as the platform. If you look here, the platform around about the same size because you don't want to be jumping onto it by accident spawning where the ball goes um, and then we just have to go underneath it select the geometry tool up here click the face drag it down a bit so make sure that it always because the ball spawns in different locations every couple of times we want to make sure that it spawns in the right location so I'm going into the other oh. so I've done that I'm exiting this I'm going to go into the top view here and just move it across make sure it's properly lined up there you go, that'll do so now we have that we just have to go into our volumes and create a trigger volume so now what we've basically done is created where you're going to be teleported from for the player and for the ball so I can move this out of the way now so now I have to create where I want them to go so I go up onto this platform I want the ball to go here so I create an actor, a path node, so where it's going to go. The path node is just basically a path, so where's the end point going to be? So I've created two. This one here can be the ball where it's going to go, and this one can be where the player's going to go. So we have to now open up Kismet, so view and Unreal Kismet, and this will, this will come up. So the first one that I'm going to do is the player. You can do this in any order you want. So this is the player one. I'm going to right click on Kismet and create a new event, touch. So whenever something touches the trigger volume, I want this to happen. So what do I want to happen? I want it to do a new action for the actor. I want it to take the position and velocity, well no, sorry, just the position rotation, sorry, and put it onto this platform. So I go new action actor, get location and rotation, move it up, control if you select something, you can press control and drag and you'll drag it around. And then after that, I want it to then set the rotation. So I go set actor, sorry, location. There you go. So this can set the location and the rotation. So touches that, it gets the information and that information then gets passed on to the setting of the location. So now we have our base. This is what we want to do. Now we have to give it the values that it needs to be able to do it. So to start with, what location and rotation do we want? This, what here this does is it says, I want to find out where to go. That's what this does. So I have to find where I want to go first. So this one is our player. So I can then say, this is where I want to go. So to tell it I want to go there, I have to right click, create a new object. So this is just saying, this is what I want to, telling it that this is what I want to go to. So it's like, here you go, here's an object. That is your target. That's what. You, that's where you want to get the location and rotation of. So you don't want the location of the player because that's not important. What in, what's important is where it's going to go. So now that you have this, you can then create 
a new variable object object so this is basically sorry not object wrong one vector so new variable vector this is a location in world space meaning somewhere in the map so zero 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 means it's just at nothing right now so this location will be set by this so it'll give you the location and it'll send it back out again down here and once you've got it from down here you can then tell the actor wait a minute, it's going to set it that this is where you want it to set to so you can also get the um, rotation but personally if I just wanted to set it to anywhere if I wanted it to be specific I'd right click create a new variable again vector and then you can actually set the vector values in here if you know them XYZ so the rotation of it so that'll change the rotation of your car so if you set rotation to 0 0 0 that means it's going to be facing wherever it is that this node faces so I think the facing of the node is the red part so if I move it this way I think you're facing that way I'm not sure actually I haven't tried it I usually don't set the rotation like that but anyway so now that I've done that, anything that's spawned inside of this trigger will be teleported up here. But wait, there's one thing we also have to do that is important. We have to check this trigger volume. Because we respawn, or every time you hit it you want it to change it, you have to change the trigger count. If you leave it at 1, it'll only do it once. Leave it at 0 and it does it as many times. So whatever you want. So the trigger delay, set that to zero as well, otherwise if two players spawn at the same time they won't be able to both be teleported. So player only, we don't want the ball to intersect with this, otherwise the whenever the ball spawns it'll be spawned on top of the player and then it'll bounce up and down a lot. So that's done for that. And we also want to set the velocity of any player that enters this. So that means that if you fall off the map and you hit it, instead of respawning, so instead of destroying the car, respawning, sending it again, all we want to do is skip out in the destroying part and send it back up again. So we don't want you to be moving super fast when you move back up, so we create a new event, and then we go on to actor, sorry, new, new action, sorry, actor, and you say set velocity. So we don't need to get any velocities from anywhere, so we don't, we don't need to do a get location rotation for the velocity. There is one that exists for get velocity, but we don't need it because we only need to set it to be nothing again. So every time you touch it, it does this and it does this. So what's our target? So this is important for both of these. So at the moment, just so you know, we've got, it touches it, it gets the location of the path node that we've created on top of the block here, and then it tells the UDK Kismet the location to set for this target. But the problem is this target doesn't have anything at the moment. So how do we know what target that we want to give it? So what we do is we create a new object, so a variable, a object, and this object is currently nothing. So instead of making it nothing, we tell it this is the instigator. So whatever touches this trigger volume is now this object. So whatever we do with this object will be done to whatever touched it. Okay? So now we want the target of this to be that. So now the actor location is going to be this object. So whatever touched it gets sent somewhere. So we also want it to set the velocity of this target. So whatever touched it changes its velocity. So what direction do we want the velocity to be in? So we have to set these. So the new variable, uh, new vector. So the brown means it's a vector. So we don't want it to be going in any direction in particular. So we just set it to zero. So the blue, dark blue, means that you, it wants a um, a double or a float, so basically a number with a decimal point in it. So we create a new variable and we do float and then float because you can do a random one and just a, just a float. So this is a float, a floating point, meaning a decimal point that changes location. So we connect that up and that's it. That should be completely perfect in teleporting us. So that, whenever a player goes into the box, will be teleported up onto the platform. Now we want to do a similar thing for the ball. So what we do is not write it out all again. We click it all. 
copy, and then paste. Alright, so you can do that for whatever you want. Like anytime you create things, you want to redo them. So if you were adding boosts customly, instead of doing it through the actor, you just do it through this. So you do that, and then you select whatever trigger you want. Right click, new event, touch just like before. Connect it up, you touched it, and you also want it to change the velocity. So this will stop the ball from bouncing up and down super loads whenever it spawns. So it will just go spawn straight onto there. I might actually move this up a little bit more. And the car's in the right spot, that's okay. So, but wait, if we do this, then this node here isn't being used, because I've just copy and pasted everything. So this path node here, so if I zoom on this, this is path node 4. That isn't path node 4, this one's path node 4. So what that means is that when you're copy and pasting, you have to make sure that you're changing the variables that you need to. So you can't just copy and paste it, or it won't spawn in the right location. We get rid of this, because we don't need that one here. We select the one we want to spawn to in the scene, we right click, and then we do new object variable. So then control, drag, that's the target now. So that's where it's going to get sent. And we need to tell it again that this is the instigator. So anytime you delete these trigger volumes here, you have to recreate all the links. So if I delete that, I have to create all the links again. So that's all for this. Um, there is also a possibility of creating a kill volume that will kill you, but unfortunately it doesn't work properly, so I won't tell you how to do it right now because it's not really any point in me telling you. So, if I then build, build all, if those of you who are following along have figured it out already, I just forgot to change the touch volume on here, so I need to make sure it's zero, and I need to make sure the trigger delay is zero as well. If I didn't do that, then the ball, every time it got destroyed, would just simply, well, it would be pretty crap, to be honest, <laughs> because it would just um, keep falling and not work properly. So, um, there we have that, and we want this volume to also not be player only otherwise the ball won't be teleported you have to make sure you uncheck player only if you want the ball to be teleported and then I'll go and build again alright no problem no problem file save all that's my map saved there we go now I can just copy them across there you go copy across load the map on the Rocket League map loader and open Rocket League so if I've done this all correctly it should work there's always the chance that I didn't there we go, see it spawned right on the platform and there's the ball Bonk. so it's still a little bit in the ground you have to make sure that the teleporter you use for the ball is a bit more above the ground than the one for the car because otherwise it'll get stuck in the ground when it spawns. So now if I hit that over the edge, it goes down, down, down to the burning ring of fire. There you go, and it spawns back up here. You can always um, make it be destroyed sooner or you could set a massive um, kill uh, vector or whatever all the way around the map, that way if anything gets hit out it gets immediately respawned. So if I jump off the map, there I go, Woo. there we go, back on top. Do you notice how if I jump off and I'm going in a direction, I get spawned back like that. I get spawned with the same direction I think of what I had before. Oh god I went too far. Oh well. So respawning here, not working for some reason, so I'm just going to reset. There we go, when you reset, because it's just like resetting before, it's fine. Because I already get spawned in the right place. If I'm going this way, yeah, immediately reset. See, it's not resetting my rotation or anything at the moment, which is fine. But if you wanted to do that, you could as well. So say you had different levels that you wanted to um, teleport the user to every time they beat a certain one, that's how you do it. So that is basically the 
well, basically the basics of Kismet. Um, that's just teleporting, really. Um, it has a lot of uses, to be honest. So you could teleport the ball, you could teleport the player. Um, I haven't gotten around to figuring out how to just teleport the ball, but I'm sure some people have got it figured out. So, yeah, that's it.